morning morning everybody michelle is here michelle is here on saturday august the 24th 2024 and so i thought i'd get on up and have some have a little bit of a conversation with you to let you know what's happening in my world and i want to really you know stress the importance of these times these the timing of these moments I, I ought to say because um, there's so many things upon us and so many people are going to get drowned uh, more so figuratively and metaphorically in what is happening and they're not going to be able to keep their heads above water okay so I uh, I've been busy and I'm going to be I, I could tell I'm going to be really 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 busy for, you know, for, for a while <laughs> until I get things moving on and things off the ground. Uh, I want to go out. I want to uh, give a, uh, send out universal love to those that are resonating with me and silently supporting what I do. I know a lot of you are in these uh, certain type of positions. Uh, and, and it, it, you know, and it's irrelevant what it is what your positions are but i know a lot of you know how important these times are okay and that's why you are attempting in the best way possible to reach people at the same time you know you know you have to be creative a lot of you know about what it means to be in a life-threatening situation okay in other words that your life was in danger because of your recognizing the truth the truth can be very very dangerous uh for those attempting to relay the truth and so that's why i say you have to be uh creative about it and make sure you understand the importance the importance of it and that it has to get out the truth has to be set free literally figuratively and metaphorically so i'm doing my share uh, it's it's going to take more than a village. It's going to take millions and billions of us, actually, to um, see if we can reverse, not necessarily reverse, but see if we can um, uh, have a more of an opening of moving forward. Because it is, a, it's, it's the most important thing is to move forward, you know, to move forward in our consciousness development, to move forward in implementing things that has to be done. These are crucial, critical times for a lot of people. And a lot of us just really don't know what's going on. But you know why? Because a lot of us are in a spin. We're just doing the same things we've done five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and believe nothing has changed. And that's, that's a sad reality when it's right before our eyes. And that's literally, figuratively and metaphorically. I told you, pay attention to nature. Pay attention to nature and, and and see if you can reconnect back to nature so you'll know what the hell is going on. A lot of damage has been done. I was watching a couple of, uh, of videos and I noticed how people were using these drones, you know, you know, to, to go through neighborhoods and go through areas of the country and something, you know, and I was... Uh, at a place where they, that was happening. They had this nature video going and someone was, you know, had a drone up looking and, and the scenery was beautiful, but something struck me like I was punched in the stomach. You know, uh, there were no animals. I saw no animals running in those areas. I saw no animals in those oceans. Maybe all I, the most thing I saw were boats. I saw people fishing. I may have seen an animal here or there, but in the majority of all of those, all of those uh, um, drone videos of nature, I saw no animals running. No animals. Okay, so pay attention to your environment when you are out in nature, quote unquote, and ask yourself, what's missing from this picture? What, and that's what we are responsible for doing anyway, is filling in the missing pieces and connecting the dots and finding out, okay, what is really going on? 
And that is what I noticed. And it hit me hard. There were no animals running around in that, in that so-called nature vi videos. The, you know, there were no animals. That's just the end of that. And so that, that's disturbing to me. And it ought to be disturbing to all of us. Because without animals on this planet, this planet cannot survive. So pay attention. That's all I'm asking. You know, just pay attention. And I know people have a, uh, a certain level of skepticism, and you're supposed to. You're supposed to have a, a certain level of skepticism. Because if you do, that means you can take yourself off of autopilot and say, okay, what's really going on here? Let me research this a little bit further. Okay, don't be, you, I mean, you don't have to be defiant. You know what I mean? You don't have to necessarily be defiant. But just be gentle and kind with yourself and say, hey, let me investigate this a little further. And if you are still thinking on the terms of how your parents were thinking, how your grandparents are thinking, then you need to catch up. These are different times and moments than our ancestors, our grandparents, our parents. These are defining moments. These are defining moments. And I, and I find enthusiasm and joy in it. Because, yes, I understand my parents' reality somewhat, you know, because I was there. <laughs> I was, I was, you know, I was in the house with them. Uh, and, I, and I've said this before. Yeah, I knew that there was love in the house, but there was also chaos, you know, and uh, a lot of other things going on, you know, in that, in that dynamic. Because there was a lot of us, you know, and, um, you know, I noticed how my mom's personality changed over the years. And my dad did also. But I was more focused on her. I was more concerned about her and her mental health. I was so concerned about that. And, there, you know, there was reasons for it. Because I, I used to pay attention to her. I used to watch her. And, and then that's where I noticed how she was an extrovert, as everyone called, called that. And how she slowly became an introvert. And, and, and it was so, you know, it was, it was that gradual change. And the reason a lot of people don't notice these gradual changes is because they're concerned about their life. You know, they got things going on with them and da, 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 da. So these are not our parents or our grandparents or our ancestors reality, not by a long shot. Now I've said, yes, we, we ought to respect our ancestors and realize that we are their descendants we are not our ancestors. We are their descendants. And keep in mind, we are going to be uh, our future descendants and children. They're going to look back at us as their ancestors. And what are they going to say? Are they going to be praising us? Okay, I doubt it. I, I, I doubt it. But that's an opinion. So... Again, these are these are moments that no one's have ever, ever been through before, but people are attempting to apply that same spin to these realities. And yes, you might be, you might be, quote unquote, you know, whatever you decide uh, de define as successful with it. But a lot of people are not going to tell you the truth anyway. You know, I mean, and and that's fine. You don't need to share all of that anyway. I don't need to know that. You know, you're applying a certain spin that you've applied 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and you realize it doesn't work and you don't know what to do. So you just, you just stay in that spin until you can trust yourself to come out of it with fresh uh, vitality and vigor, joy and enthusiasm about another type of reality. In, in other words, is not your mother's or your father's reality. So that means you are open to change it and you have free will. I think a lot of people are realizing as they are uh, challenging their beliefs that we've been manipulated, indoctrinated, scared to death. You know, we've been scared that something's gonna happen to us if we don't believe. So many people are realizing, okay, that was imposed on me and a lot of it happened to us when we were children so of course with as children you know if we if we are told that if we don't 
if you don't, uh, you know, do this or that and the other, you know, that uh, what they used to say back then, uh, somebody was going to get you, the boogeyman was going to get you, uh, you're not going to go here, you're not going to go hit there. And we were, we infused a lot of uh, uh, delusion and insanity into, you know, our children, you know, because that's what, that's the reality of the situation. Okay, that's no longer, that long, no longer exists. All of that has expired. It's gone. So you have these moments right now to re, uh, to, uh, you know, a lot of people say recreate, relearn. I say it's not even that. It's more so of, of an awakening to describe it as you see fit. You know, what do you want? What do you need? Okay. A lot of a lot of people are going to also realize too as well is um like like I know who I'm aligned with. I know that. I know what my alignment is, I know what my path is, I know what my journey is, and I know where I want to be. That means my destination. I know all of that. But in the meantime, in between time, I have to get through all these details. You know, again that that one person standing in the million in the in the middle of a million people you know and i and i'm attempting to to navigate through all of that just like any other individual is we're all attempting to navigate through you know and sometimes people are blocking you so that means you need to somehow get them out of your path okay you can start out being gentle and kind with them and by asking you know people to to get out of your path but sometimes you might have to apply some force Okay, you sometimes you may have to apply some force, but understand what that means. It's not mean doesn't mean to get out my AR or whatever they you know my machine gun or my Glock. No, it requires you know and and as a matter of fact, you know that's a metaphor. You know you and, and because it all starts within you, you're gonna have to sometimes get out of your own way, and that's called suspending your ego, your beliefs, your labeling. Well, because you were successful 10 years ago, 20 years ago, that same formula may not apply today. Okay. And like I said, a lot of people are not going to tell you the truth. They're not, and, and you know what? You don't need to. You don't need to be telling. What you need to do is tell yourself the truth. You need to be, be truthful to yourself. You know, you don't have anything to prove to me or anybody else. Okay. You need to be truthful to yourself. And you need to be honest with yourself. And you need to be trusting of yourself. Okay, once you trust yourself, that path, getting through that path is easier. Okay, yes, you need some doubt, but that doubt has to be replaced with confidence. Okay, and I know a lot of people are in certain type of realities or relationships or in certain type of positions, in, in certain type of uh, climates. You just have to know how to trust yourself to navigate through that properly without de causing any more harm than you caused yourself. A lot of us are causing our own harm and that's because of how we're thinking. You know, uh, we've all been abused in some kind of way, I'm sure. We've all been assaulted. We've all been bullied. We've all been this or that or the other. But then on the same token, some of us have been bullies. Some of, ha some of us have assaulted people violently assaulted people you know you, you you're gonna have to resolve that otherwise you're gonna be deja vu deja vu deja vu and a lot of people don't understand that I can tell um, that means you're just gonna be living the same type of realities over and over and over and over again um, everything will appear to be a coincidence which is there's no such thing um, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna a lot of people are going to get joyful and say, oh, yeah, I've been here before. Well, that should be a red flag. Well, you know, if you if you say to yourself, okay, I've done this before. Let me see, you know, that should be a red flag to you. What I'm doing now, I have not done before. And so I am confused. You know, and, and I don't like that word confused. But it's, it's difficult. But I am encouraged. You know what I mean? Uh, confused. 
Ah, it says lacking logical order or sense. Okay, I can say it doesn't make sense. A lot of things that I'm going through, what I'm doing, because I've not done this before. Okay, this is a different reality for me. And, you know, when you spin your ego and get your ego out of the way and that labeling and all that, whatever you think you are, you know, how important you think you are and become nothing. A lot of people get offended when, you, when, when I say become nothing and, and because they don't realize the power. Okay, they're taking everything so literal and they don't recognize the power in being nothing. Oh, wow. That's like almost being, a lot of people say, I want to be a fly on the wall. Well, that, that may be the metaphor you may be thinking about or talking about. You know, to be a fly on the wall, that means you're nothing. So that means you can observe your reality completely different from a different perspective. And, and, that's, and that's beautiful and wonderful and exciting. And a little, you know, it, it could be a little, um, I don't want to say scary. Good grief. Because, you know, I told you about these words. We have to realize some of the words that we're using are uh, indoctrinating us. And they have been for thousands and thousands of years, like um, uh, uh, being chosen. Okay, that that's a, the, I, and when I even say that word, I can feel that energy with that word. That's an indoctrinating word. Okay, uh, scary. It says um, causing fr fright, easily scared, very timid. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But th these moments are, you know, kind of. You know, I can feel it in my stomach kind of moments that I, you know, it's like when you get ready to do something that you want to do, of course. And, you know, you get that kind of uh, uh, something going on in the stomach. You know, it's almost, it's an, it, can, it can be excitement for some, but some is anxiety. Some people have turned it into anxiety, unfortunately. And with anxiety, uh, that, that will eventually cause harm, as everybody knows. Uh, anxiety, in my opinion, is a, is like a warning when you have anxiety. But if you have a excitement, you know that is a is a you know and that's part of why a lot of people are uh, addicted to extreme sports. You know, bungee jumping and whatever they're doing now. I don't know what they're doing. You know, you know how you get or jumping out of planes. Oh my gosh, I don't need that. <laughs> but it's exciting. But it has a bit of joy to it. Anxiety has doubt, and that and everybody knows that. There's some doubt there. There's some red flags, and you just need to pay attention and say, "Hey, okay, why am I feeling these anxiety? What am I feeling anxiety about? Okay, is something you know? Because you you'll learn that anxiety is a you know is a companion to you." You know, it's like attempting to warn you about things or attempting to bring something to your attention. And so you sit and, and you can turn it into an excitement and say, okay, well, what is my anxiety telling me today? You know, turn it into excitement, you know, make it exciting. And that way you'll be more open and not constrict yourself. You know, see what, say, okay, well, you know, when you are, you know, meditating or doing whatever you do during the morning, dry lips again, uh, as always, uh, as you are grounding yourself in your reality during your meditation, which I hope, you know, a lot of, a lot of you are doing, whatever form of meditation you do, uh, don't make a big deal out of meditation, please, so many people are losing their motherfucking minds thinking they understand meditation, and I want to stress how dangerous that can be. Okay, you can send yourself off into delusions, hallucinations, and, 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 and people can't reach you. Okay, understand that meditation is not a big deal to be attempting to tap, tap into certain type of energies that you do not understand. You're just setting yourself up for danger. And I mean that. Okay, I mean it. And I, I'm not going to stop stressing that. Okay, stop bothering other people's energy. Concern yourself with your own energy. Okay, be a guide, yes, but stop interfering with others' energy, with all these techniques that people are using, and they claim is meditation. No, that's that's something else. Um, I know a lot of people are into this supernatural. What is it? Sorcery. 
think it's called sorcery. Um, it says here, use of supernatural powers over others. It's always over others. It's always an attempt to control others. Supernatural is an attempt to control others. Anybody, anybody um, disagreeing with that, just relax and breathe and ask yourself, what are your intentions? What is your purpose of wanting to, to uh, have power over other people's energy? Okay, and, and, and interfere with that. Okay, they call it witchcraft and all this, um, this other stuff. Evil powers, evil spirits, whatever, magic. Uh, those things are dangerous to, to, to be, be attempting to tap into. People are always wanting to be concerned about other people's energy anyway. They don't want to be concerned about their own. And that, that is what irritates me. They want to be over everybody else. They want to be uh, superior to everybody else. That's why they participate in these certain type of activities, okay? Otherwise, you know, why would you bother? Okay, it's about being over people. And a lot of it is about greed. Okay, I can read your palms. Okay, I can tap into your energy. I can talk to your dead relatives. That is dangerous for the individual, and it's dangerous for anybody believing that kind of stuff. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna come off of that either. Okay, so anyway, these are defining moments. Okay, unlike anything we've ever had or experienced ever. So this opens up a lot of opportunities for those of you that are ready for this and understand the power of your consciousness. And once you tap into that, everything will appear magical to you. Everything will appear to be, uh, uh, what's that other word, magical, uh, you know, all these other uh, words that we are uh, applying to our experiences pay attention to the words you're using i know there's a lot of people i <laughs> get upset because a lot of people are having fun introducing other words into our vocabulary which is i think is a good thing but we do, we're the ones that make it extreme because we share it a million or billion times you know that person made a video once about something but we're the ones that are that are uh, fueling the flames by sharing it a million and a billion times okay and then blaming the person that put it out they put it out once that's the same thing with a pain or an injury sometimes you, or you know whatever you go through is it usually happens once but you play it over and over and over and over and over in your mind by ruminating and thus causing it to happen again and again and again and again overthinking will cause whatever you're thinking about whether it's positive or negative, to keep reoccurring in your life. Okay, and so we like to focus on the negativity. We don't like to focus on the positive of it or the, the neutral, neutrality of it, because it has to be neutral. The positive and negative experiences have to be neutral. But if you keep focusing on the negativity of it all, of what happened to you when you were a young child, or what happened to you here, or what happened to you there, and you keep thinking about it, you're ruminating. And guess what? You're going to cause it to happen again and again and again and again. Please understand that. Okay? If And a lot of people are doing things that are conjuring up stuff to happen. And so you'll hear people say, why does this keep happening to me? Well, because you're ruminating about it. Everything starts from our thoughts. Okay? If you're asking yourself, okay, why does this keep happening to me? Why do I this? Why do I that? Because you're ruminating over it. And you're causing it to, to happen. That's the power of energy. That's the power of our thoughts. Our thoughts are energy. Okay? So, I just want to go ahead and get up this morning and share some things with you. And let you know that I, I, again, I appreciate my silent supportive people that are doing the best you can to reach others in a creative fashion. I understand that you are, some of you are in danger in certain areas of your life if you attempt to uh, expose, I mean, in other words, we're all 
you know, when anytime you're working towards good, that can bring a lot of negativity towards you. And a lot of you know that. You know, you, you, you have developed yourself enough to know that, okay, uh, because some of you have, have had your lives threatened. Okay, I can speak from experience on that. And so you just have to, and if, you, and if I'm not doing anything wrong, then I'm not backing down from anyone. But again, some, some of you have these kind of sensitive positions in your life and you just have to be creative about it. And I know, and I know it can get, I know we can make an impact. I know that because of the timing of it all. Okay. And the reason why I'm running and rambling <laughs> as, as I do, and I'm so excited about it. But at the same time, I understand the dangers as well. Okay. So keep moving forward. Stay righteous. Uh, do everything in your power to understand you, what is going on inside of you. Pay attention to your own warnings within. Okay. And you will resonate with the right person, whether it's me or any other person doing the same things in their own creative fashion. So. Be kind and gentle with yourself. That way you can know what it means when you're being kind and gentle to others. It makes a difference, okay? So go ahead and send peace and love all over the stars and moon and mountains. Universal love at the end of the day. Trust me. I'll be back.